So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch from just looping through strings, but instead loop through files. And we're going to, it's going to take a little bit of work because we have to open the file and we'll bring a lot of things together at this point. So here would be another task and that is here's a bunch of text from the book and uh, you can just split this into words and count and find out what the most common common word is and how many times it uh, how many times it occurs. So go ahead and try to do this for a second. Feel free to pause. Actually, don't bother pausing. This is too hard. We should write a program for this. It's not, it's not easy. Humans don't like this. It makes you concentrate. Um, and so here is uh, a counting pattern where we're going to take a line and then later we'll read this in uh, a file. And so we're, this is just an adaptation improvement of the previous thing. So we're going to start with an empty dictionary. We're going to ask for a line of text and read it in. And then we're going to use split. So remember the list of words? Well, what we're going to get here is a list of words. We'll print it out and we'll run this counting. This is the this is the little loop. For every word in whatever this was, we're going to do this idiom of add, either adding a new entry or adding one to an existing entry and then printing that out. So let's take a look at what we get there. So if we run this, we can give it some text and I've got this, this would be all one line. And then it splits it into words and you see that these words here are split, 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 split. I mean, that's strings and splits. Remember, strings and lists and split. And so now the counting is going to go through this list. The clown ran after the, and it's going to build a histogram. The clown, you know, one clown, the up, 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 of these things are going to go up, right? That's this histogram. And then when it's all said and done, we end up with the histogram. And so counts is the dictionary that ends up with a histogram and we can side by inspection see oh the is the most common word and there are seven of those right so if we sort of take a look at this we start out we make a dictionary we read in a line of text the text goes in we um, and then we split that and we print the words out so these are the words right then we have a for loop that's going to loop through all those things and then produce a dictionary and when we print the dictionary out that's what we're going to get and the seven, okay? So that's one line of text. That's how you walk across the words in a line of text after you've split the line into separate words. So now we're gonna look at ways that you can loop through dictionaries. We just produced a loop that can build a dictionary, but now we're gonna, gonna look at a dictionary. And so we'll start with a very, very simple example and then we'll work to a slightly more complex example. So here's a dictionary, just the constant, Chuck is one, Fred's 42, and Jan's 100. And so we're going to use a definite loop with the four, four key and counts. Now it doesn't have to be main key, but key is the is a good name because these are these are keys and values. K V K V keys and values. I just mentally think of this as keys and values and keys and values. So this iteration variable is going to work walk the keys. It's not going to walk the values. It's going to walk the keys. Chuck, Fred, Jan. Not necessarily in that particular order. As you see, it goes Jan, Chuck, Fred, because just because I typed it in in this order, it's not like a list. It doesn't stay in that order. It might move around a little bit as we add data to it or as we set the data up. And so you can, in the loop, you can get the key, and so that's what prints out the Chuck, Jan, Chuck, Fred, but then you can also get the corresponding count for each one of these by just pulling it out of the, uh, pulling it out of the array. I mean, pulling it out of the dictionary, right? And so uh, we can pull out the corresponding value. And so we print out Jan 100, Chuck 1, Fred 2. And that runs this loop three times. So if you just use the in and you give a dictionary here, remember all the different things we've been able to put there on the end of a for loop. And dictionary is another thing we can put on. And we get a list of keys. Now, there's a couple of methods that allow us to get the keys. And so... We have, you know, we can say turn this into a list and we get a list of the keys. So this is a dictionary, the same dictionary. We get a list of the keys. You can also get a list of the keys by using the keys method. So that's take this dictionary JJJ and give me all the keys, which gives me a list, which is kind of the same thing. And then we can ask for the values and they give me just then the values extracted out of this dictionary. So that's nice. Um, now, the one thing is, is that while I said you can't predict the order, if, if in two statements you ask for the keys and then the values, they at least come out in the same order, even though you can't necessarily predict the order that they come out. They come out in the same order. And then there is a third thing that we can do, and that is list, uh, uh, ask for the items. And we can say, give me the items. And that gives us a list. This is our first really kind of composite 
combined data structure where it is a list, a three item list, 0, 1, 2, and inside that there is what are called two tuples. Jan maps to 100, Chuck maps to 1, Fred maps to 42. Coming up next, we're going to have a whole chapter on that, and so just take a look at that for the moment, and we will come back to that in some detail later. This whole items idea that gives us back a list of key value pairs, because it's not just a list of keys or a list of values, it's actually a list of key value pairs, allows us to write in Python a very clever and elegant loop. What we can do is actually this items gives us back each item in the list has a key and a value, and we can actually take two iteration variables for AA comma BBB. This is two iteration variables. And if you're coming from another programming language, this is super cool and it's a Python only feature. I'd never have seen another language that's capable of doing something this simple and that elegantly. So what this basically does is says, we're gonna simultaneously advance these two iteration variables. So this is gonna be the key and the value, the K and the V. Key and the value is gonna be Chuck one, then, it, then they're both gonna advance. Fred, 42, Jan, 100. And so that means in this simple loop, if we just print them out, we're going to get the key value pairs, of course, in the order. And so it's sort of AAA and BBB simultaneously walk down these key value pairs. And so that's really pretty, and it makes for a very succinct loop. It's a, the syntax is a little sort of disquieting when you first see it, but it's a super elegant thing, and you just have to say I, items. If you if you don't say items, you just get the keys. If you say items, you get the key value pairs. And you have to have two iteration variables. If you don't have two iteration variables and use items, it'll complain and say, what are you doing? I'm giving you two things and you don't have two variables to receive them. So two iteration variables and items are basically related. Now, we're going to take a look. And this is code that I showed you perhaps many weeks ago about I said this is a little story about how to read a file and count all the words in the file. And now we're back to it. And at this point, you should understand every single character of this program, every single concept of the program. You should literally stare at this and look at it, code it, play with it until you absolutely understand it. So let's take a look. Again, I showed you this weeks ago. So we're going to ask for a file name. Then we're going to open the file name. Then we're going to make an empty dictionary. Again, this is all stuff you've done before. And then we're going to have an iteration variable that's going to go through the lines in the file. Right? So line is going to go line, line, line. Then we are going to split that line, each line, into words. Chop, 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 chop. So that's words is the list of the words in one line. We're inside of a loop that's going to go through all the lines. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write the have the word iteration iterate through each word in the line. And then what we're going to do is take each word in the line, and we're going to do this histogram. Right? So we're going to, this, this is going to run not only just for every line, but for every word in every line. So we have a nested loop for every line, then we split it, and then we go across the line. So it's almost like a typewriter where we go ding, ding, and that's what we're doing. Ding, ding. So it's like the outer loop is going down, down, down the lines, and the inner loop is going across, across, across the words. And eventually we are going to see in this middle, in this last line, every single word in the file. And we're going to do the counts get word plus one, which is our magic histogram making line that, uh, if you don't remember what that is, go back a couple of slides. I just talked about it. At this point in the code, and it's important to be able to draw these lines, at this point in the code, you have the histogram, and it's in the variable counts. Now, we want to find the largest one. Now, we have, written we have written loops that can find the largest in a list, but now we want to find the largest value in the key value pairs of a dictionary. So we're going to, we're going to start with, the, we're going to know what the largest count is and the largest word of that has that count, and we're going to set them both to none because we're going to prime our loop. We have to prime our loop, and we're going to say to none. And so then we're going to write one of these cool things that says for word comma count. So word and count are going to go through the key value pairs because we've got items here. So it's going to go through the key value pairs, loop through each key value, whatever it was. There could be a million words in here. We're going to go through every one. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that key big count is the current largest count we've seen so far. And if it's none, well, then we haven't seen anything, or the current the count we just read is greater than the, the big count so far, 
we are going to jump in. And this is sort of like, oh, this is a new, new personal best count for this particular data set. And so we're going to remember the word in big word, and we're going to remember the count in big count. So this is just a max loop. It's a maximum loop with the extra thing that we're recording in addition to what count is the largest, what the word that was associated with that count, recording it. So again, this is a starting part of the loop. We're going to do some work. And then when we exit the bottom of this, big word is going to be the word that is the most common, and big count is the number of times. And so if we run a file, we say, oh, in that file, two is the most common word, and it's 16 times. If we run the clown file, well, the is the most common word in seven. And so this now is, can, and this could have a very large file and give you the most common word. And so that is sort of a really good application of dictionaries. So dictionaries are the most powerful, well, of the, they're the, they're the most powerful collection we've seen so far. Um, it is good to see both lists and dictionaries to understand what quest, uh, dic uh, collections are. They are things inside of Python that can handle more than one item inside of it. And we'll learn about another collection about tuples in a second. Just understand the get method because that leads to very compact code. Um, understanding their various ways to iterate through dictionaries. And uh, so we've learned a lot. But in the next uh, section, we will uh, learn even more and put these together and do some sorting and do some other stuff and really start to see uh, the real power of dictionaries.